So, we finally have a court date for Joe Mixon in his trial of his menace or aggravating menacing charge. Yes, it is right before the season two. So, on August 14th, Joe Mixon will be going to Hamilton County for his court hearing for his aggravating menacing charge. I want to start this off by saying everyone is innocent until proven guilty. Okay? At the end of the day, right now, all we know is everything that is being said about Joe Mixon is an allegation. Is that allegation true or false? We don't know. A judge will determine whether those are true allegations or false allegations. So, please, for right now, refrain from saying, oh, he's a piece of crap or, oh, he's being uh, wrongly accused. Just keep in mind, at this moment in time, we do not know anything. None of the information was revealed to the public, according to the sheriff office, sheriff's office, and they did that for a reason. So, let's just go ahead and go into this with the uh, idea of what happened and everything like that. So, if you guys are new to this situation, here's what happened. Joe Mixon was in a road rage incident, incidents, where he apparently got in a problem with a female car in front of him. He got out of his car, went up to her car, and pointed a weapon at her. He then threatened her in some way with that weapon. And all he said, based on what I've heard <coughs> from reports, is that he told he's an NFL player and he can get away with anything, and he pointed a weapon at her. That's all we really know about the story. This happened back during the playoffs, so around right around January. The After she filed charges against him for this, then they were dropped a couple weeks later. The reason why was because there was no actual evidence of this happening. This was all he say, she say. Then after, I think back in April, they were refiled because they found actual evidence. In April, he did go to court and he, uh, he pled not guilty to these charges. After that, he went ahead and, you know, they scheduled another court hearing, obviously. And now that is going to be August 14th. Now, keep in mind, again, this is not going to be impacting this upcoming season. We saw with Zeke Elliott. We saw with Alvin Kamara. We saw with countless other players, Deshaun Watson included, that a suspension by the NFL, if he is found guilty, will probably take some time for the NFL to give him the suspension. Now, the NFL does hate the Bengals, so I would not be surprised if the you know, NFL goes, oh, the Bengals did something. Ha, ha, ha. Give me your suspension. Oh, no, do it right now because we're not going to wait. I wouldn't be surprised. But at the end of the day, though, most likely if this is, he is found guilty of what happened, then he will, again, probably be suspended in the NFL, but probably not this season, probably next season. It will probably take a year for everything to go through. Um, now, if he is found guilty... Of what he did. Here's what he could be facing. A maximum of 180 days in jail. A maximum fine of $1,000. A maximum of 5 years of probation. Now I do not believe Joe Mixon has a criminal record. Other than a couple instances. Um, I think that one time in college. Which again I'm not going to get into that whole situation. I believe he ended up punching a female um, at a shop. I believe she said something to him that caused him to do that. Again, I don't know all the information slash details. I was told that she called him a racial slur and that he punched her in the face, right? So, and again, whatever. Uh, again, that, that's one incident, right? Second thing here was the situation at his house, which happened back in February. Where he was not actually home. It was his trainer. And it was his um, sister and her boyfriend. And some kids were outside. And one of the kids got struck by a bullet. Um, that ended up being a whole entire thing. Joe Mixon was not home. But that obviously was his property. So there are going to be some you know, stuff there. 
Other than that, I do not believe Joe Mixon has a criminal record. What this means is he's going to be most likely a first-time offender. Um, as long as the weapon also is registered to him. As long as it's registered to him, we're good. But he'll probably be a first-time offender. So he won't actually get the maximum of anything. He'll pretty much get what would be a slap on the wrist, right? Um, the reason why is because if you do a crime many, many times, then you get a harsher punishment, right? Because you haven't learned. But if it's your first time doing it and you're you're not known as a bad person or a bad criminal, then they usually go lenient on you, right? And again, it will also be he's an NFL player who'll go a little bit more lenient because of that. So my guess is if he is found guilty, I'm going to guess that it's not going to be any jail time. There will probably be a huge fine and a maximum of probably he might have to do like a year and a half or two years of probation. Uh, which again will still be him serving his punishment if he is guilty. If he did what he did, then you know, listen, he's gonna have to serve. He's gonna have to you know um, get the consequences for his actions, right? If he didn't do what he did, and this is a whole nother situation, you know, then it's, again it's another situation where a man. Uh, a football player was falsely accused of something, and it, it just all goes away. And no one gets in trouble. Which, again, then you can make the argument that that's not right, right? At the end of the day, if this is a false allegation, she should be, he should honestly counter-sue her and say, Hey, listen, you falsely accused me of something I didn't do. But at the end of the day, I think if he is found not guilty, which, again, like I said, at this moment in time, he is not guilty, but... We'll find out if he is guilty or not. If he found not guilty, my guess is he's just going to drop this whole thing, try to put it behind him, and move on to, you know, the NFL season, right? Because, obviously, this is a Super Bowl year. This is some n nonsense. If he's not guilty, this is some nonsense that the Bengals do not need. He doesn't need for his career. He doesn't need, in general, for his, you know, mentals and everything like that. But again, if he is found guilty, then he's going to be serving. He's going to be punished. And the NFL, again, will probably not implement the punishment until sometime next year. So this year, unless they just really hate the Bengals like they always do, and they just, Roger Goodell just goes, wow, the only team that could beat my Chiefs is the Bengals. Let's go ahead and put the punishment in effect right away so that they can't have their, you know, number one running back. Which, in that counter example would be funny because Chase Brown is still going to be an S plus tier running back in the end so it's it's just going to work out more for Travion Williams and Chris Evans guys thanks so much for watching I'll see you guys in the next one peace out